It's amazing what can happen to a renewed mind. The Bible says that the carnal mind is the enemy of God. Carnal, you know what it means? It means just fleshly. God is trying to get us to live above what we can see, taste, hear, feel, smell, and get us to think on another level. And when you can raise your mind to new heights, you can raise your life to new heights. Stick around. I want to talk about it. I need a change is basically getting in the Word of God and understanding how God thinks about you. What are God's thoughts towards you? How does God think? How would God have you think? Why is thinking so important? Pastor, why are you trying to get in my head? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we understand I can never go to a place I can't think. I can never arrive at a person that I can't think. Wherever I'm going to go, I'm going to think it first. And so whatever we embrace to be true defines who we are. And most of the time we have great callings, we have great gifts, but a lot of times we have terrible thinking. And our own thinking, we like to blame it on other people and blame it on the devil and blame it on this and that and other. But sometimes we're locked out of a great life and we're locked out of God's promises because we're locked into the thinking of our experiences and how we were raised and what our neighborhood taught us and where we came from and what we've been through. And we have an invisible line and we never get past it. And so I'm going to use probably more scripture today than I have ever used and if you will be attentive, I'm going to take you through a journey. I'm going to tell you, I preached myself so happy in the last service, I almost walked out of here and bought my own DVD. <laughs> but this, see, I get excited when the information, I don't try to preach sermons, I try to teach word. I want you to know what God says about you. <clears throat> and um, so how does God think? What is this thinking like? I ended last week with the children of Israel. The children of Israel were in bondage 450 years. So now you have many generations that that is all they know. And God has promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. In other words, they come out of bondage and God has, God has promised them a Silicon Valley. God has promised them a San Francisco, a Manhattan, an LA of their own. But they spend 40 years in the desert why? Because God is trying to flush their thought life. To become people who think I can operate on that level. But they sent spies into the land that God told them to seek it out and look at it and come back and give a report. I ended last week, you know, that Joshua and Caleb came back and gave a great report. I love Joshua and Caleb. They're two of my fa most favorite guys in the Bible. Caleb said, yes, it's a fortified city. Yes, they have military. Yes, these are men of great stature, but we are well able to take it. Let's go take this city. And you need somebody like that in your circle, amen? And Joshua, a little bit later, when they were talking about giants being in the land, jo Joshua said, those giants, they are bread for us. <laughs> you got Caleb saying, we're well able to do it. And Joshua saying, I eat giants for breakfast. I mean, I, I love those kind of guys, but there were 10 other people. And the 10 others said, we are not able to do it. They are greater than we. And they didn't go in because they listened to a bad report. And here is where I ended Sunday and I want to pick up today. And they said, and because we were grasshoppers in our sight, we became grasshoppers in their sight. As we thought about ourselves, we became. They viewed us the way we viewed ourselves. We didn't think we were giants. We thought we were grasshoppers. So when they looked at us, they like, we're not worried about them. They're grasshoppers to us. So their thinking defined their reality. So what I want to do today is, what is God thinking about you? And I'm going to, you know, I don't preach but about eight or nine minutes, so don't worry, hallelujah. I want to take you through a journey on 
What is in God's head? What's in his head? You want to go there with me? Let's do it. Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. This is God talking to Moses when he's getting ready to take Israel out of Egypt. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I'm the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Woo, my good. God said, I'm gonna come down on Pharaoh and I'm gonna rain scorched earth. He ain't gonna know what hit him because he messed with my people. He said, I'm going to deal with Pharaoh. I'm going to rescue you with an outstretched arm. You're going to see the strong arm of God. I'm going to lift this burden off of your back. I'm going to break the power of it. And he says, you just understand, you ain't got to fight. I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. He keeps reminding them, I got you. Next verse. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. You shall know that I am the Lord who brings you out from under the burden. He keeps reminding them, I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord. In other words, you be the man and woman. I'll be the Lord. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. Man. He keeps saying it over and over. Don't worry about it. I'm God and I'm going to take care of the God level battles. So Moses spoke thus to the children of Israel, but they did not heed because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. So Moses goes and tells them, this is what God thinks about you. This is how much he loves you, and this is what he's given you, and they can't hear it. They can't hear it because of what they've been through. They can't hear it because of their experiences. And so the promise of God is locked out, not because God's not able to do it, but because their experiences have taught them they're not worthy. They were so crushed, so broken, by the difficulty of their life up until that moment, they couldn't receive the goodness of God. Can I tell you something? I've seen people that they're so used to losing, when God gives them a win, they'll turn it into a defeat. Defeat becomes their norm. There's there's some people that fighting, they're so used to fighting that when God gives them peace, they'll turn peace into a fight. When they begin to succeed, they have a giant self-destruct button on their chest. And about the moment God's about to do something great, they'll hit that self-destruct button. God's going to break that today. I'm going to tell you, I feel the weight of this moment. And what you've been through and the cruelty of it and the bondage of it and the brokenness that has come is not going to hold you out of the promise of God. We are breaking those things from our mind and from our thought life. And I don't know if everybody's going to go, but whoever will, I'm taking you on in today. We're going to find out what God called you to be and what God said is yours. If you ain't got to the place you can clap yet, I'm going to get you clapping. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you'll clap before you leave. Tell them you'll clap before you leave. Father, bless the reading of your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Tell your neighbor, say, here we go, neighbor. Here we go, here we go. I want to start off with these scriptures. Go to Psalm 139, then straight to 147 after I read these. Now, take this journey with me. I'm going to overload you on scripture. But by the time we get to the end of this thing, you're going to see what God thinks about you and how you can begin to think that way for yourself, okay? Okay. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. You know my sitting down. You know my rising up. You understand my thought from afar. Verse 3, you comprehend my path, my lying down, and you are acquainted with all. Look at how much God knows about you. You are acquainted with all my ways. There's not a word on my tongue. But behold, oh Lord, you know it all together. Now listen to what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, you know everything about me. It's kind of scary a little bit. He says, you know a thought before I think it. 
He says, you know the thought that I don't even, that I have not even processed yet. You know the word that's about to be spoken that I haven't spoken. You know my uprising, everything that I do well. You know my downfalling. You know every flaw and you love me anyway. So everything about you is already in the mind of God. So you've got to understand that I want to start right here. In the mind of God is all knowledge. God has everything that is started in the mind of God. All of your uprising, downfalling thoughts, every word spoken, all your ways, your paths, God knows it all. He is infinite in his understanding. Go to the next verse, Psalm 147. He counts the number of the stars. Wow. I know it's been cloudy and rainy, but have you looked up recently? He counts the number of the stars and he calls them all by name. So galaxies that scientists are still trying to discover, God already named them <laughs> a long time ago. So God didn't just set the stars in space, but when he hung them and suspended them in space, he gave them a name and is intimately acquainted with all of them. Next verse, please. Great is our Lord and mighty in power and his understanding is infinite. There's another scripture that said that the hairs of your head are numbered. Don't you think about it? So not only does God know all the galaxies, all the stars, all the universes, and all of them has a name given by God, but then he says the hairs of your head are numbered. So that doesn't mean God knows how many hairs are in your head. It means he knows when number 1,218 has fallen out. They each have a number, or in some of our cases, he knows when number four fell out. <laughs> they all have, he has numbered the hair on our head. You're not talking about computers. You're not talking about intelligent people. You're talking about a God with whom houses all wisdom and all knowledge. Hebrews chapter four and verse 13. Let me keep reading. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. In other words, there's nothing you can hide. There's nothing God discovers. There's nothing that's revealed to God. There's nothing he don't know. God doesn't learn. God doesn't remember because he doesn't ever forget. There's nothing God has to recall. He is perfect in knowledge, perfect in wisdom, infinite in wisdom, infinite in understanding. And he has all knowledge at all time about all things. The hairs of your head are numbered. The stars in the sky are numbered your uprising, your thoughts, your words, everything. Somebody say, the mind of God. Mind of God. All right. So have I established that? Yes. Let's move on. We live in the file cabinet or in the computer chip of everything that has happened to us that is painful, what they did when they left, how they did it, who betrayed me, who hurt me. And the fact is, I cannot get my life unstuck until I get my head unstuck. You are not in charge of every thought that goes through your head, but you are in charge of the ones you meditate on. In this series, Ron Carpenter shows you how to steer your life in the right direction. So if I really want to change, I don't put my hand on it. I put my hand on my head and say, God, change my thinking. I can change my marriage if I change the way I think about marriage. I can change my economy if I change the way I think about money. This six message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Next point, Psalm 139.17. Now, everything's in the mind of God. Now we're shifting. How precious are your thoughts toward me? Mm. Oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am with you. Not only do you know everything, but you are so infatuated with me that when I woke up this morning, you were thinking about me. All day long, you think about me. When I go to bed tonight, I will still be on your mind. 
and you take the coastal region of every continent on this planet, the thousands and thousands of miles of coastline, and you add up every granule of sand, and it has not even begun to match the thoughts that God has towards you, not toward us, towards you. So the hairs of your head are numbered. Your paths are already known. Your thoughts are known before you think them. Your words are known before you speak them. He knows you're uprising, you're downfalling. He thinks about you all day. When you wake up, you are still on his mind. And the thoughts that he has towards you are greater than the sands that align the seashore. Somebody who didn't think anybody cares and somebody who didn't think anybody thinks about him. I want you to know you have a God that cannot get you off his mind. Is anybody in this building happy? Shout amen. Woo! So, everything is in the mind of God is the first thing I want you to get. Then secondly, I am known in the mind of God. I just made that pretty clear. All right? Now we're going deep. You know I'm Southern. I say y'all. I want to hear y'all. I want to hear Californians say y'all. Just say y'all. Okay, y'all. We're going deep, y'all, right here. We're going deep. Haven't been deep yet. We're going deep right here. All right. Ephesians 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Mm. Created in Christ Jesus. Those of you that were here. Back when I preached on the Christ series, what does Christ mean? Anointing means spirit. For we are his workmanship created in the spirit. You existed before you existed. Created in the spirit for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Didn't say you had to. He said, you should. It will work out to your advantage if you should. So in other words, you existed in the spirit. Are you ready for this? You are known in the mind of God. And before you got here, you existed in the spirit of God. That's deep. You existed before you showed up here. God already knew you in his mind. You already existed in the spirit. You weren't created when your mom and daddy bought their first Big Mac and stuck two straws in the same milkshake. God already knew you in the spirit. You were known before God ever created the foundations of the earth. The Bible says you were created in Christ in the spirit before God ever said, let there be light. And, the, and that God already had a plan laid out for me in the earth that when I get here, I am to carry out the purpose of that plan. That is the way you live your blessed life. That's the way you live your best life. And that's the way you make your greatest impact in the earth is to find out what is God's plan for me when I get here and follow those steps perfectly? That's the time where all your needs are met. That's the time where you walk in overflow. That's the time where God wipes all your tears. That's the time where no matter what comes against you, you cannot lose when you're in the middle of God's will. It doesn't matter how much life kicks you down. God will always cause you to rise back to the top again. Who am I talking to in this building? God knows everything in his mind. God knows you in his mind and you existed in the spirit before you got here. Woo. So God created you and you are his workmanship. I'll talk about this in the marriage conference <coughs> that's already sold out by the way <laughs> in February. But the Bible used two different words for Adam and Eve. The Bible says, and he took the mud and he formed the man Adam. But when it got to Eve, it said, and he fashioned. <laughs> Guys, I hate it, but it actually kind of says God just kind of took the clay and just threw it out there. <laughs> and that was the man. But when he got to the woman, he, he took his time. And he's, oh, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he did. He formed the, man, formed the man and he fashioned the woman. So 
We are his workmanship. We are created in Christ, created in the anointing, created in the spirit to do good works. And God laid them out before I got here. So God has a plan and a predestined path for everybody under the sound of my voice. But whether or not you live it will not be up to God. It will be up to you. Because you have choice. Life is choice driven. God tells you the blessed path. God tells you the bumpy path. And he says, now you make the choice. Remember Jesus says, narrow is the way. And then broad is the way. Narrow is the way that leads to salvation. He said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. He said, you can go the broad way if you want to. He said, but it's going to get bumpy. He said, but if you keep your boundaries narrow and try to do the right thing, he said, that leads to salvation. In other words, you'll always find that God will be there when you make the right choice. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm preaching. Now, are we all on the same page so far? I got to make sure you're on this journey with me. Just wave at me. I got to have a confirmation. Wave at me. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now, I'm known in the mind of God. <laughs> I existed in the spirit of God. So now, God makes the heavens and makes the earth. Now it's time for whatever God has predetermined in heaven that now I come in and fulfill that mission of his will in the earth. So he puts Adam in the garden. Adam, you can touch it all. But Adam, there's this one tree and I need you not to take the fruit from this one tree. Why? Why? What is, the, what is the poison in that tree? Knowledge. The knowledge of evil that up until that time has been shielded from man. When Adam made a choice to not follow God, I'm going to do what I want to do. When he ate from that tree, the knowledge of evil flooded the earth and the knowledge of God was sucked out of the earth. So now the knowledge of God is trapped inside of God and the knowledge of evil fills the earth. People say, why, why can God allow wars? And why can God allow this mess? And why can God allow racism? And why can God allow this? And why can God didn't allow that? That tree created that. That ain't God. That's that tree. That's people living by what that tree taught them. And when they ate from that tree, the knowledge of everything vile, the knowledge of everything evil, flooded the mind of man. So now here's my dilemma. I'm known in the mind of God. I have a predestined purpose in the mind of God. I am his workmanship created in the spirit to do good works when I get here. So I have a predetermined purpose from heaven, but I get in the earth and I have a mind that is eaten from the tree. We live in the file cabinet or in the computer chip of everything that has happened to us that is painful. What they did when they left, how they did it, who betrayed me, who hurt me. And the fact is I cannot get my life unstuck until I get my head unstuck. You are not in charge of every thought that goes through your head, but you are in charge of the ones you meditate on. In this series, Ron Carpenter shows you how to steer your life in the right direction. So if I really want to change, I don't put my hand on it. I put my hand on my head and say, God, change my thinking. I can change my marriage if I change the way I think about marriage. I can change my economy if I change the way I think about money. This six-message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.
You know what, I hope that you've been enjoying this series. I've been saying this now for, for many, many years, since uh, way back in the 90s when God gave us the wonderful privilege of reaching you through these cameras by TV. And uh, that is the fact that we always preach in series. And once you hear the whole context of what God is saying about a particular topic, when you hear all those truths, it's amazing how your whole world just opens up because when it comes to your mind, you can live up to the re level of revelation you have. When God increases that lid, your life's just gonna move up and you can press toward the upward call of God in Christ. Man, I'm excited about this word. Listen, I just wanna say thank you. Uh, in the most genuine, most authentic way, I know how just to look you in your eyes and say, I am so grateful uh, for those of you that pray and support and encourage and give in everything that you do. You believe in us, you trust us, and I just wanna say thank you for that. Um, we are just having some of our best and most progressive, most growth-filled years ever. And um, you know what? Uh, a lot of people, I guess, at this stage in life maybe wouldn't even be saying that. They'd just be happy to just kind of hold the line and keep going. But our platform is expanding and we're simulcasting in different languages and we've got better engineers than we've ever had and technicians and God's bringing expertise and personnel and translators. And behind all that, there are resources that make it happen. And you heard the heart of God to say give. I want to tell you thank you. I know you didn't give to us, you gave to God. But we were the recipients of the blessing and we got the mission and the challenge from God and you supplied resources from heaven to allow us to do what we do and I'm grateful. And I want to invite more to join in this wonderful family we call our covenant partners. Uh, maybe it's a one-time gift, maybe it's a first-time gift of many and you'd like to become a part of this family and give every month. Doesn't matter, for your first-time gift of any amount, we have this wonderful gift that we want to send to you that just says thank you for all that you do. We plan on doing this for a long, long time. We have been doing it a long time now, 22 years, and we want to do it a lot longer. Thank you for all your help. And I want to invite those of you who've never given before, if this has touched your life, would you consider praying and asking God, could I be a part of helping them do what they do, of spreading not just the message of Jesus, but the message of Jesus and his kingdom to as many people as they can possibly reach. That's what we're here to do. God bless you. We love you. Go check me out on Twitter. Go check me out on Facebook. Check me out on Instagram. Whatever your favorite social media venue, Grandma, Grandpa, you say, I don't do that. Go check it out. Why? Because we're talking all the time on that. And until next time, a big God bless you. And I'll see you soon. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.